Gateway API version 1.0 has been released with most of its features entering general availability. General availability indicates that the Gateway API has reached a level of maturity and stability that it can be considered production ready. So the Gateway API is a new Kubernetes API with standard specifications for service networking in Kubernetes. Essentially, it is a successor to the Ingress API. Currently, we create Ingress objects using the networking.kh.io API. Under this new Gateway API, we shall use the gateway.networking.kh.io API, and we shall be using this API to create objects for routing traffic to Kubernetes services. Ingress has been the primary way in which we expose our Kubernetes services to external clients. If you have used Ingress extensively, you know that it has very many limitations with a number of features not implemented out of the box. The vendors and the maintainers of the Ingress controllers that we have available have tried to implement these missing features in their own way and this has of course resulted in inconsistency of the specification. I'm sure you see it all the time where you have a different configuration for basically doing the same functionality uh, across different Ingress controllers. This is precisely why the Kubernetes SIG network group started development on the Gateway API to address the limitations that we have with Ingress. What are some of these limitations that we currently have with Ingress and how exactly does the new Gateway API address these limitations? One of the main differences is the standardization. Now, with the current Ingress implementation, uh, we have an inconsistent implementation across different Ingress controllers. Now, for example, if you look at this uh, example of two popular Ingress controllers, the Nginx Ingress controller and the Traffic Ingress controller. Now, this is an Ingress object for facilitating external access to an HTTP or an HTTPS application. So for the Nginx Ingress controller, we set the name of the Ingress object and then the Ingress class name, uh, which is actually the Ingress controller that is going to facilitate the connection. And then under rules, we can set the domain name or the host name where the application is going to be reachable. And then in the HTTP section, we can set the paths, uh, which is basically uh, defining how traffic is going to be routed into the application. And then you can set the actual service name and port number in the backend section. Now, as you can see already with the traffic ingress manifest, uh, traffic chooses to do it differently. In fact, it chooses to install its own custom resource definitions. Here we have uh, the traffic API that is being called to create this resource. And then the ingress route custom resource definition has been added to the cluster. So we have the name of the ingress route and then as you can see, the configuration is also a bit different from the ingress object of uh, the engine X ingress controller. So basically here we're defining the same thing just in a different way. We have the paths here that we're going to be calling inside of the application. And then we have the domain name or the host name of the application and then the backend service here defined under services. What the gateway API is promising to do is to unify this kind of configuration into a standard configuration or standard objects that are the same irrespective of the ingress controller that you use in your Kubernetes cluster. Along with your gateway API compliant ingress controller, you will install the custom resource definitions that are required for you to configure these objects. And one of them is the HTTP route. So we have the HTTP route kind here, and then you can see we are calling the gateway API. We have the name of the HTTP route, then we have some ingress controller specific annotations. Then here we have the host names, and then under parent refs, of course, here we're defining the actual ingress controller that is uh, responsible for routing this traffic. Then just like the ingress objects that we are used to configuring, some of these things, of course, will look familiar. You have the rules here, uh, the parts to where the traffic is supposed to be directed into the application. And then under backend refs, we have the application service to where we are directing the traffic. Another particular pain point we have with the current Ingress specification is the fact that there's no inbuilt support for non-HTTP protocols like TCP or UDP or GRPC. For example, if you'd like to configure uh, a UDP service with the Nginx Ingress controller or with traffic, you would do it this way and you notice that even in this 
scenario, the configuration is different. For the engine X ingress controller, you'd have to basically create a config map where you define your TCP or UDP services. So here I have a config map called UDP services. And in the data section, I have the port to which I'm exposing the application. And then I have the actual application, which is the cube DNS service in the cube system namespace. And the service is also listening on port 53. So I'd have to reconfigure the ingress controller to take this config map as an argument. So here I'm adding the UDP services config map to the engine X ingress controller configuration. And just as expected, traffic version 2, of course, has its own custom resource definitions that it prefers to use. So here we have the ingress route UDP custom resource definition. The same configuration that we had in the engine X object. Here we have the backend service of the cube DNS listening on port 53. So with the gateway API, we have inbuilt support for multiple protocols. So we can have HTTP, TCP, UDP, or GRPC protocols directly inbuilt into the gateway API specification. And you can see how they are configured here. I have a UDP route, a TCP route, and a GRPC route as well. And you can see even across different custom resource definitions, the specifications aim to be a little bit standard. So you'd have a similar configuration across multiple custom resource definitions. Another important feature of the Gateway API is the role-based access control configuration, meaning the Gateway API divides its configuration in sections so that different teams can be responsible for different parts of the configuration. So if you take a look at the diagram here, I have an HTTP route that we have seen earlier, uh, routing traffic to a backend service as well as a TCP route routing traffic to its own backend service. So the HTTP route and the TCP route reference another object that is called a gateway. So a gateway is somewhere where you have some additional configuration that helps you facilitate access into your cluster all the way through to your backend service. Now the gateways as well are going to be referencing a gateway class which is basically an ingress controller that you have installed that supports the gateway API specification. So if you take a closer look at the configuration, we have a gateway class. So when you install an API gateway compliant ingress controller, so you define a gateway class, which basically specifies a specific ingress controller. So in this example, we have this ingress class called Kong and the controller name is the Kong ingress controller that has been installed in the cluster. Now, several ingress controllers can be installed in the cluster, and this could be the sole responsibility of the platform engineers or the cluster admins. So then you can now also delegate the responsibility of creating gateways to another lesser privileged group, like maybe the DevOps engineers can create gateways throughout the cluster. So this is what a gateway object would look like. So we have the gateway again uh, called Kong, and then it is referencing the ingress controller that we specified in the gateway class. So we have the gateway class name here. So you notice here, this is also where we define some configuration, like the protocols that the gateway support. Yeah, so here we have the HTTP protocol defined in the gateway. And then of course we have the actual HTTP route custom resource definition which can be defined by the developer or the application owner. And all they have to do is reference the actual gateway that is responsible for the connection. So we have here the gateway reference and apparent refs. So you notice for facilitating the TCP route, I have a different gateway configured in the cluster. And this one has a Postgres port open, so it can facilitate a connection to this TCP route, which is a route to a Postgres database in the cluster. It's not absolutely necessary that we create a different gateway for each protocol or each port that we want to open up or to have uh, TCP routes or HTTP routes configured for. This is just to demonstrate the versatility of the gateway resource. So we can create different gateways in different namespaces and then have different services refer to this gateways. And then we can also control access to the gateways. We can define you know, which service is able to connect to which gateway. So this is just a highlight of the couple of features that you can expect to see if you use the new gateway API specification.
and then we have very many improved features like with tls termination we can have a more advanced configuration when it comes to exposing our https applications we even have the ability to terminate tls connections directly at the gateway or we can pass on the tls connection uh, to the internal http route we also have the TLS route custom resource definition that we can use to create a more advanced TLS configuration. And then we have inbuilt support for multiple backends. We can route traffic to multiple backend services and have the traffic load balance across these services. Another interesting thing is also how the Gateway API configures resources across multiple namespaces. It is possible to have your HTTP routes or your TCP routes in different namespaces, routing traffic to services in other namespaces, and you can configure your gateways also in different namespaces. And then you can define which resources are able to interact with each other. So for example, if you take a look at this reference grant configuration, uh, it's called test grant and it's configured in the test destination namespace. If you look at the spec here, we have the from and then the to section. So here it is granting permission to objects of kind HTTP routes within the test source namespace to reference any service within the test destination namespace. So obviously an important question to ask is do we need to switch uh, right away to the gateway API? Is the ingress API going to go away? Is there a rush to get all applications exposed using the new gateway API? Well, the short answer to that is no, at least not now the ingress specification is not going away anytime soon so there's no immediate danger of your ingress objects getting deprecated in an upcoming kubernetes version although the gateway api is considered production ready uh, the maintainers still believe that it's going to evolve a lot in the coming months as people start to use it and provide feedback the focus is to get more and more people using it and you know give feedback on features that they like features that they don't like or maybe some functionality that they like to be added in, in future versions. Another reason why I believe Ingress will still be around for quite some time is the fact that the new Gateway API specification is a little bit more complex. Uh, a lot of things need to be configured to get started. So there are so many elements, including the Gateway class, the Gateway that we see, and then a lot of other resources like the HTTP route, the TCP routes. So getting acquainted with it would be really the first stage and it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for people who would like to adopt or test it within their own environments getting acquainted with a new gateway api can be very worthwhile the sheer number of the added benefits or the added features that come with the gateway api makes implementing it or at least testing it out and getting acquainted with it you know worth the effort if you're deploying a brand new cluster, for example, this might be a great opportunity to get the Gateway API running in your cluster from day one. If you already have an existing cluster with several ingress objects, then it is also possible to introduce Gateway API compliant ingress controllers in the same environment and move over some services bit by bit just to test it out and see how it integrates into your environment. So if you want to give it a try, you can check out the implementations page on their GitHub. So under the gateway controller implementation status, there are a bunch of ingress controllers that are currently supporting the gateway API specification. You can see that some of them are in beta and uh, some of them are in alpha. And if you want to test something out that has most of the features, you can look out for the ones that are in general availability. You can check out Kong. It's a particularly good ingress controller that can help you get a good hands-on onto the new specification. Yeah, so once again, thank you again for watching. And if you'd like to support the channel, please like this video and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.